Hello and welcome to another tutorial series and today we'll go ahead and uh, have a little discussion about how to create an NFT in Photoshop, how to create layers for an NFT in Photoshop. I will touch on some design basics and I will also give uh, you know a breakdown of some one -on -one, uh, 101 uh, Photoshop techniques. For anybody that does not know how to create layers in Photoshop, how to create an NFT in Photoshop, or is generally curious about Photoshop, it doesn't necessarily need to be uh, applied to NFTs, but um, you know that's the context in which we're speaking today. Mind you, we're not making an NFT in Photoshop, we're just simply creating artwork um, that will be contained in an NFT later or at some other time um, or maybe never, depends. So what I'm going to talk about today really quickly are just a couple designers to give you some context of where I'm pulling my ideas from. Uh, I'm going to hit on grids real quick in graphic design. We'll then go ahead and jump into Photoshop where I'll give you a, a pretty quick 101 um, of just some basics and then we'll get into making the NFT where I will do uh, just a freestyle live here with you. Um, I'll go ahead and use a couple different techniques that I know and I will model them after you know a particular style that I care for and you know we'll just do it straight together. There's a couple ideas that I've been wanting to work with uh, so I might explore those today but Anyways, here we go. How to make a how to make a NFT in Photoshop. So I've got you know this guy here, Vignelli, Vignelli, Massimo Vignelli, one of my uh, favorite designers. I have this open just to show you a little bit where I'm drawing some inspiration from. You know, very simple, very clean aesthetic. You know, classic designer from back in the day. Um, you know, another designer here that I am a big fan of, David Carson very chaotic uh, aesthetic however just extremely balanced and his work always kind of just worked out really well uh, and Paul Rand as well you know very simple but also kind of free-flowing um, you know with his style his aesthetic uh, and very balanced uh, too so these three gentlemen are kind of the source for the inspiration behind the idea that I had um, these three gentlemen were all graphic designers and you know that's why I know of them fairly well uh, and these three gentlemen, you know, worked with grids a lot. The reason why I bring up grids is because that's how we can get balance in our compositions. And again, this is for people that do not know or are unaware, um, you know, of what they are, what their purpose is. And, you know, these grids help us to weigh out the visual, right? We can decide where we want to place things, how we want to place things, and we can go ahead and give different sections uh, or areas of that grid importance or prominence etc you know and you can see different examples here you'll hear oftentimes making and breaking the grid ironically it's right there but in order to make you know a grid we have to understand it in order to break it we need to comprehend it right and that's like anything uh, so with that being said you know, we're going to just dive into Photoshop really quick and start looking at some stuff. So, this doesn't necessarily apply to Photoshop. This can work for any graphics program, really. Um, well, it's always over here. I hate when it does that second monitor. Um, but, you know, we'll use Photoshop today. So, what are we going to call this? Uh, freestyle NFT tutorial, right? You know, name it whatever you want. In previous videos, I talked about size really doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to do, well, I guess it's the context, right? But in this particular case, for a new file, uh, I'm just going to do 900 by 900 and 96 pixels. The reason why I set it to 96 pixels, it might be a little bit bigger of a file size. Um, however, on larger resolution monitors, you can get, you can still get a pretty crisp image. Um, and without getting pixelation and it keeps the file size down a little bit more. So once you get into Photoshop, here we are. 
not a lot to it. Uh, I started using Photoshop uh, version s Photoshop 7, and it's pretty much stayed very similar. There's always been a toolbar on the left and layers on the right, and you know, pretty much that's going to be all you really need to worry about for the m majority of you know your early stages. There's going to be other stuff. Photoshop does a shitload of things. Uh, you know, we have various presets. You can go ahead and you swap out these to other stuff. I'm not going to change because I have some things set for me. Um, but you can set, you know, different presets on how the interface will display tools for you, depending on what you want to use. You can access different sub panels and menus uh, on the fly. Some of them I keep out, you know, based on what I like to use on a particularly, you know, brushing illustrators really like these kinds of things. But it all just depends. You can fully customize this stuff. You can expand and collapse things. You know, you can close the tab groups and actually get rid of them. So now I'm just stuck with the basics, right? And the toolbar has always been in this area. These things have changed, but we're not going to use a lot. We'll probably just use the pen tool uh, to, do some to do some isolations and masking. We'll probably use shapes, and we'll probably use, you know, text gradients and fills for the most part. We'll definitely be exploring different layer styles and effects uh, and some pretty simple techniques. So we have our document. It is, you know, ready to rock and roll. I'll go ahead and hit save. And I said I was just going to freestyle and pop off on the internet. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to start with a grid because I think, you know, that's important. And I said in order for us to understand, you know, how to make and break the grid and use these techniques and principles in our own artwork, it's good to know them, right? So I'm going to just close my eyes and pick something randomly. Oh, I didn't land on anything. Sure, this is weird, but we'll use it. I was in a call the other day, and somebody was asking about, you know, picking stuff off the internet and what are the legalities if they could use like a, a character, for example, like uh, Mickey Mouse, what have you. And, you know, I'm no contract lawyer, but there are things that are, you know, listed in the public domain that you're allowed to access, but at, you're also able to use things and change them, you know, uh, as long as it's different by, I believe it was like 25% or something. So when you do see artwork, you know, people using a, a familiar character or something like that, and you're kind of curious as to how they're getting away with it, or, you know, if that's even allowed. Uh, and then, you know, in short, yeah, t as long as it's different, as long as it's not, um, you know, exactly the same and immediately identifiable. Um, but so what I'm, yeah, so what I'm doing now is I'm just going to create a, a basic grid. And this basic grid is going to be the structure for how we're going to lay out, you know, our artwork. And we're going to use this to start building, you know, different prominence, right? Um, and I just quick, I just built this, right? Just looking at what was here, identifying columns and identifying rows. Uh, and for me, I just saw some basic large columns. I could maybe put some gutters if I wanted to, to get some extra space here. Um, but essentially what I've created is a coordinates, right, to where I can constrain my artwork and I can decide how I want to lay out my composition. Now, that's a really good point to kind of transition onto because some you might not know, right, how do I lay out my composition? And the simple answer is really it's up to you and what are you creating? In this aspect, we're going to create something abstract, something interesting, something freestyled and on the fly. So what I'm going to follow is what's considered the rule of thirds. Uh, photographers are familiar with this. Um, you know, art, artists are probably familiar with this. But what this does is if you imagine your canvas broken, uh, you know, into this grid or, you know, broken into thirds, you can start to imagine how you want to frame your composition. In this case, I've plopped this shape right here. And uh, basically, what I'm doing is I'm showing you that I c by positioning this shape anywhere in like the two-thirds majority of 
this canvas, right, I will always have a weighted and balanced image. And what that means is simply like this, right? You know, I could have just one simple shape, and this could work as an abstraction. You know, there's tons of art that uh, just explores shape spaces. Whoops. Um, you know, or I could get even crazier and do other stuff, but as long as it's kind of falling in that majority of an area, we can go ahead and build something that is visually appealing and uh, easy to decipher, you know, mentally, right? Because that's basically what we're doing when we look at these images. We're deciphering what's in front of us and what that means to us, uh, you know, what kind of representations that are there. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer. We have our basic grid. I said that I was going to literally freestyle this in front of you while we're here on the tape. Uh, I don't remember saving it as a PNG. Oh, I need to save it as a Photoshop. I never did. Well, there we have it. We're going to save this together and call it a day. Freestyle tutorial. Bada bing, bada boom. So let's go over to the interweb. I've been kind of wrestling with an idea, and I want to use a concept, a um, couple things. So I want to use this style GAN. I have it loaded already. Uh, what this does is it switches a particular style. This image here, uh, I created this image using um, the uh, VQ GAN clip and output that in a from a series that I was doing. It was one of the rejections. Uh, it was also just an example I was showing a friend how the machine worked and how we could manipulate that seed uh, and create other images. So what I did was drop this bitch on Pinata and plopped the link into the input field and ran the first um, doodad here to output this style switch. And, you know, it's just creating a completely new variation. And the reason why I'm doing this is uh, because I wanted to try a technique. And it may or may not work, but, uh, you know, I thought it would be cool. So texture. And I'm going to put these on the internets somewhere. You can have them to fiddle fart with and do different things. Um, so let's go ahead and just uncomment that. And I, you know, this will happen fast because I've already ran the machine. Uh, if you have to run it, if you're experimenting with it and you do end up running it um, for the first time, it does take a little while to load your image. Oops, don't want that. To uh, load your image into it. But once the image is loaded, uh, all is well. Uh, so what I'm going to do, just get this last one. Uh, shit here. Yeah, I want to keep this easy peasy. So we're going to collect these. And now we have four variations of one texture. And I'm going to go ahead and close these because we don't need Paul Rand, Vignelli, or Carson anymore. We have our grid. Um, these are the bases that we were going to use, uh, but we're not going to use this one. So we don't need this either. We're going to plop on over to Google, and we're just going to grab some. Well, not that one. Well, that'll work. We're just going to grab some stuff. So there are public domains where you can grab a bunch of artwork. There are, uh, you know, pretty much anything on the Internet is free game. So, you know, you just, like I said, it has to be changed by, you know, 25%, right? Uh, and, you know, how I create my art is I think about concepts or topics or ideas that I want to explore. Uh, and sometimes they're controversial. Sometimes they're just fun. Sometimes they're, you know, created for no other reason just to evoke emotion. Uh, it really just depends. But uh, oftentimes, you know, artists will attach some sort of political cause or something strong, right? A message behind it. So because literally I'm going to freestyle this right now in front of you and I'm a fan of Pink Floyd and I was listening to Pink Floyd earlier and I liked the book 1984. 
George Orwell pops into my mind, so we'll do something here. We'll do something with Pink Floyd. Um, we'll grab a rose, and we will grab a skull, you know, and uh, we'll go ahead and just come up with something interessante if we can. Let's try. So this is interesting. Open image in a new tab. And look, you're like, oh no, he's right clicking and saving. Yeah, you got that right. Because I want to show you something. Oh, it's going to be one of these. Uh, how did we do this last time? Huh, don't need to. I'll do it this way. Party people. Taking that screenshot, right? Go over here. Get into my photo choppy. Once the screenshot hits my desk, boom. Now, we have an image, placed it into Photoshop. It is a smart object, and I'm going to leave it as a smart object, but I'm going to duplicate that layer and hit OK. I'm going to duplicate the layer because if I make a mistake, I can always go back to it. So smart objects are good. If I'm going to go crazy and do a whole bunch of saucy things, I'm not going to do a bunch of saucy things. I'm going to keep it simple, uh, and I'm just going to make a mask uh, and delete the background so I have an isolated skull um, and I'm going to rasterize the layer which removes the container basically like a smart contract and uh, just flattens the asset so I'm actually uh, not going to do this accurately or very well but I'm just going to click around the edge and cut stuff out. You can be as precise as you want. As If you can see, if I click, hold, and drag, I can begin to create more precise shapes, and I can begin to uh, use that to create custom shapes or whatever, really. Um, but I like the pen tool for doing things like this. You know, one would argue, oh, you could use the selection tool because I have a flat background but I don't do that my personal experience is I've never could get the fine crisp cutout that I wanted and in areas like this here where the background starts to blend with the foreground and the shadows you know you don't you don't always get that you have to you kind of lose it and you sometimes have to go in with the paintbrush and create a mask or something um, you know, to get that back or just do it something else. And for me, it's like, if I got to do that, I'm just going to do it this way. Uh, and you might say this is kind of crazy, especially for hair, but there's techniques. So I've made my, my path around the object. I've right clicked onto the path itself and I'm going to hit make selection. You can access this, uh, from up here. Where is it? Um, where the fuck is it? Uh, now I have to tell you because uh, this is terrible. Edit. No, it's here. Yeah, you can do this if you want. Select a mask, or you can do what I like to do, which is to make the selection. Um, and f boom, right? Create. Oh, I shouldn't do that because. I wanted to show you something, so let me undo. I'm using another monitor. It's kind of if that happens, if you are in a different tool, you navigate from the pen tool. This arrow here, the path selection tool, and the direct selection tool allows you to do stuff right. So the direct will allow you to select one individual node or point on the path, and the path selection tool will automatically select the entire path and all of its selection. So I'm going to make make the selection. I'm going to grab the modal that's over here. I chatted about feather radius um, in a previous article. And basically what that does, you kind of saw it earlier when I jumped ahead. Um, it feathered the edge and the blur and the blend. So I'm actually going to leave it. I might, actu I might pump it up. Uh, just why not, right? Uh, it's automatically selecting the inverse. That happens sometimes in Photoshop or um, any graphics uh, application simply because it saves settings and it tries to make it uh, more helpful for you. So, cool, we have our skull. I'll pop back over into Photoshop. 
I don't need this. Uh, I don't need this. I said I was going to grab a rose. I have a rose cut out, but, you know, because I want you to experience the experience of experiences, we'll go ahead and do something. But maybe I won't use a regular rosé because, actually, this thing caught my eye here. Uh, let's pop over and take a peek. So, sometimes you can copy and paste. Sometimes you can't. This will allow it. Perfecto mundo. That will save us a few minutes. And uh, I'm actually going to use this, and we'll we'll use that to create like an overlay or a texture. So this might be an instance where I would do a different technique to create an isolation because I don't really care so much about the edges of this one, you know. Um, I don't really care about, you know, whether or not it's going to be crisp brown, but thank be thankfully because it's such a hard edge, we don't have to worry about it. So we have that, toss that in there for shits and giggles. What can we get from Pink Flo what, what can we get from Pinky Floydy? You know, this is a classic. Who doesn't want this, right? Let's try and get, uh, fuck off, I'm not dealing with that right now. So here's a fun little tip in case you don't know it. I'm about to show it. Moving a little quick. My mind moves faster than my mouth sometimes. Uh, that's what I wanted. I was there the first time. Here we are. So peep this, right? You can set the size of the image you might want to go after. Um, so you can make sure you get a you know, hefty piece of meat to work with. But anyways, let's pop off back to Photoshop. And this is what, so this is what I'm seeing. I can turn this off if I want to. It's just basically saying that because I'm pasting this from somewhere else, um, you know, it might not match the color profile. You don't have to worry about that. It's not a problema. No es problema. Watch two. So, bet that up. So we need one more piece of meat here. Ooh, I love it. This is right on time. Copy this mother flipper. Copy this mother flipper. And I'm going to hit Command V for pasta. Copy pasta. And just resize this little blitch so we can get up in that snack. Here we go. Bada bing, bada boom. Put in spoon. All right. So I'm going to do some quick production work here. Like I said, I'm going to make choppy choppy, karate karate. I'm not using the selection tool, even though this has hard edge style. And um, I could probably easily just ch click the red and get all of it. It's not going to help me because of these letters. So for me, all I want is the eye. Uh, uh, oh. So I'm going to make the path. Delete. Whoops. Oh, you know what? I'm glad that happened because I don't want to feather this. Make selection. Yeah. Jinky. Uh, so if you're zoomed in, you don't always know if you're inverted. Uh, so you can just hit Command Z to zoom out. Great. I got that. Let's use this in the black round. And we'll we'll set something to this. Don't know how I want to use the rosé just yet, but I do kind of have an idea. Oh, didn't see that there. That I want to get use the eye in something like this. Whoop! Great. So here we go. I don't know what I'm gonna make. Literally, I'm making this. Ah, oh shit! I hit buttons with my f giant fat fingers. Literally making this right in front of you, together. Uh, I'm going to pull in some of these textures that I made. And I'm going to quickly just turn all of these off and do something. What I wanted to do and kind of explore was use shapes for different things as masks. And, you know, this would probably be a cool way to experiment um, yourself and how you could use different shapes, create compositions, and create some interesting effects. So why I'm making these shapes this way is because I'm planning on using them as kind of like a patchwork for, ex for something. I don't know exactly how, but I had this idea in my head from a previous project where I wanted to run the textures through like we did 
uh, early and kind of use masks to, um, you know, create this quilt. I, I don't know how to better describe it. Uh, let me rasterize these real quick. Uh, let me group these and let me go ahead and hit cancel and let me just hit texture. It's always good practice to try to keep yourself organized. Which one was this? When you're working, oh, at least name your layers um, so you know what's going on. Uh, you know, it's pretty helpful. And then I'm just going to actually, we're not going to really worry about that. And leave that like that. So I'm going to turn the mask group off. I'm going to turn the texture group off. I'll turn our background on. And I'm just going to go. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what we're going to get. Uh, but I'm going to commit to just whatever I produce. And we're going to do this together. Let's see how it works. You know, and pay attention. Look around the screen. Especially when I navigate away from the uh, canvas itself. Because I'm going to be experimenting with different... Uh, layer settings and that's how I achieve effects in my artwork and I think that it'd be kind of an interesting way that you might be able to achieve effects in your own artwork so this to me already is interesting and what I like to do you know when I see something like that is start really fucking around with uh, opacity levels and transparencies because it can start to create unique textures and depth in artwork uh, and that's what you know that's how you can get some really interesting concepts and effects um, just by trying things out so I'm building up this right over here to the left because I want to create balance and kind of a bit of a mental confusion if you will the the mind is kind of like oh, what's going on over here because I want to center the composition really around this skull which um, I don't want to auto select I turn this is a pain in the butt sometimes and you'll experience it auto select will select whatever layer I click when I'm in the canvas and it doesn't necessarily mean that's the layer that I want to collect uh, select so I turn auto select off when I want to do specific stuff if I see something uh, that I like that I do not want to change. Um, so I like the way that's kind of worked out, you know, and I didn't really mean to make that happen. It just kind of did itself. Uh, so we'll go with it. And I think, you know, I like how this is kind of doing it there. Uh, but what I'm going to do basically is just build this out real quick. If I go s radio silent, not a problem. I'm here. Um, and we'll just work through it together. So there's probably a million ways you can do this. I'm going to do this a very fast way. Simple, easy. What I did was open my layer group. I picked the one I wanted to work with. I clicked command and I clicked on the layer itself, which made a selection of that layer. And because I said I wanted to create like this quilt pattern, I'm going to start doing that. And I'm going to just duplicate layers and invert selections and start deleting to create strips. I'm not going to really worry about what happens, but I'm going to do it that way. Feel me? Okay. So, you know, for this one, I'll just grab on a rando commando. And let's see, maybe I want that, right? Well, maybe I want this. Let's try this. So zippity doo da zippity yeah. You know, I don't know, like I said, what this is going to create, but we'll freaking give it a, a shot. -a. I've been, I was rolling this around in my head uh, a few times trying to visualize it. So really, I'm using you. <laughs> just kidding. I'm, as a, a sketchbook, in a way. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not using you. We're experimenting together. I'm trying to figure out if I like this idea, if this idea is going to work, um, if I can potentially use it to create other artworks in the future. 
can I combine it with these different neural networks to develop um, a different composition? Like one of the ideas I've been rolling around with from an art point of view is um, just really combining multiple uh, generative tools to create uh, kind of a combined outcome. And that's really what we're doing in this instance. So I'll start, you know, just keep chipping away at the old block, really. And we're getting an interesting effect to start. You know, like I said, I'd had no clue what this is going to uh, produce. Um, and I don't know how much more we'll do as I build things up here. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do this. Which one? Oh, uh, shoot. I made a, uh, I made a boo-boo. No worries. That's the sign that what we'll do then is watch this. These last two, we'll get rid of our resources. We'll literally, we'll literally cut them apart. Uh, let's take uh, oopsies. Sometimes my fingers uh, hit the k the keyboard. I'm oh, sorry, the side of the mouse, which is a pain in the ass. I got big ass hands for a fucking Apple mouse. Oh, but you know what? You got to use what works. <coughs> and I've been using the Apple mouse for too long. Can't turn back now. Just trying to see which one I want. I guess we'll do that to just round this beast out. All right, cool. So there you have it. We have our core basic choppy karapi there. I'm not going to use these again. I'm going to daylot those. We have not used the rosé. I think the rose is going to be something I want in the foreground to kind of add to the interessantis, interessantiness. <laughs> and, uh, and this is going to be one of those things that I plan on getting jiggy with. Let's see. I really like sometimes what can happen with instances like this. Like, I didn't plan that. That might be something interesting that mm, could happen in a different lifetime. Mm, this could have some effects with opacity. Uh, hard mix is usually fun, depending on what you're doing. And also know that the colors in the layer have a lot to do with, you know, the initial kind of situation scenario. I'm not necessarily liking that how that's working. I'm also not necessarily liking how lost old Senor Skull is. So what I'm going to do here is bring him to the front, but, you know, I might start playing around with potential layer styles with for him, too. And maybe I don't necessarily want, you know, that to be so heavily struck there. And maybe, you know, I want some thing here to kind of create more of a pixelatione. You know, that's f not really any word except one that I just made up. And then, you know, I could see how this kind of goes here. And what's kind of, what's interesting to me is like we're, it's almost taking on this stained glass effect. Uh, you could also see how nutty this could get. Um, in terms of where it could go. There's a layer somewhere. Um, right, you could start to see what's actually possible. So, right, if I go here, I duplicate that layer. Maybe I want to bring out some more of the skull itself. One thing I like to do is desaturate, and sometimes I like to pump up the lightness. Okay. Maybe I won't. But what I really like to do is I'm actually going to bring this back to normal so you can see it. I go back to the adjustments and I go to the levels. Here, come here. The reason why I go to the levels is because you have more control over the balance of the uh, tones. And you can start to pull out really hard edges. And I know this uh, because of screen printing and working in publication design. Um, and when you work with large printers, like rollers and stuff like that, these blacks 
can the black color can um, get muddy in the midtones and really take away the crispness of an image. And what ends up happening, if you've definitely seen it in like cheap publications at the store where you won't have any separation between the values. So what this does is allows for more further control and a better reproduction of a black and white image in that context. However, you know, that really doesn't apply today, but it still works really well to create some interessante techniques. So now that I have this sharpness here and I'm able to uh, pull that out, you know, I probably will go and desaturate um, all of the skulls to create a consistency. And desaturation is literally just removing the color, making it gray. Um, that's all. So I'm going to explore uh, the different styles that I want and see which one I'm kind of going for. I, I don't mind this one. This is a little bit of what I was after. Uh, let's see what else we get. Overlay works. I like when it's more pronounced and coming through. Vivid light really is cool. I like the texture it's creating there. Linear light's kind of cool. But I really want to make sure, oh, see, difference, exclusion, that's interesting, that I can get um, all of the different aspects kind of to bleed through. So uh, I'm kind of torn between overlay and probably maybe just a reduction in opacity to help build on top of, well, the blacks here. Um, I can maybe go to multiply. I can always bring this one up in terms of its tones. And we'll see, right? So let's take a peek where we're at, too. Uh, how long have we been going? This is quite a lengthy video. So you can see here that uh, there's a lot of different stuff that we can do on how I can start building layers. You can see that if I start adjusting opacities and layer effects, I can create different interesting techniques, you know, in a composition and bring out aspects of an uh, artwork I didn't even know that was possible. You know, I, I would have not technically known that I could have potentially got these techniques or textures to work, right? This is all by chance. This is all by me just freestyling for you to kind of give you a little bit of an idea on how you can create some really random ass shit. But how you could take this, you know, t on a whole nother level and try stuff of your own. I mean, if you took these techniques, really, and you applied them in your own manner, right, you know, what what could you use? What could you create? The, the possibilities really are limitless, if you think about it. It's up to your, you know, you, right? These are the different layers that you'd be creating. These are the, the I objects and items and things that you would be outputting when you do randomizations and when you see, you know, people creating those uh, randomly generated uh, kits or collections, you know, this is that process. Oh, and you can't really see what I'm setting because I always forget, but, you know, you can see here kind of my settings and I'm just messing about with drop shadows, outer glows and stuff. And you can start to get an idea, you know, uh, so let me go ahead and turn the rollers off for a sec. Well, not the rollers, the guides. Where is the guides? I don't really want to clear guides, but that's fine. And, you know, who knows? There's an NFT, technically, if we wanted it to be. We could output this, list it on OpenSea or Solana, where with other NFTs. We could take every single one of these layers now, right? We could use every single one of these layers and we could output these 
in different styles like I've shown in other videos and then we could push that all through a you know randomizer to develop another style of artwork so you know there you have it right it was a little bit longer than I wanted to uh, but I think it's probably pretty useful. So at this point, if you wanted to save it, if you wanted to do something, you would just quickly export it. But we're not going to quickly export it. I want to show you this pane. And you can choose different settings. You can choose different stuff like that. But now, excuse me, you have a piece of art that was created in Photoshop. Uh, what did I call this thing? Who cares? Put it on that. Oh, freestyle. It's created in Photoshop. You know, this is basically, there it is, um, you know, an over-the-shoulder type thing real quick. I didn't really have an idea of what I was going to do. I just kind of went with it. You can see that the majority of the weight of the composition is here to the right because I use this skull as my predominant focal point. And because I use the eye, it helps to balance out and draw you in. So, you know, you can see here that with grids, when we know how to use grids, when we know how to make and break them, we can create interesting compositions. You can see here by using layers, we can build up different uh, styles and techniques and outputs, and we can, you know, run these through randomizers. We can run them through all sorts of different code. You see here that I used artwork from the internet it's kind of like sampling nothing here is what it was remember you know all of these images is, have now been collected layered and compiled to create a new image um, yeah, so have fun do what you want and enjoy